Hello, I'm Atuba Jordan. Now, thank God today is Friday. Praise God. Listen, all week we've been on chapter 12 talking about the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, talking about the spiritual realm of a believer. There are many things you can do by the Holy Ghost. I, I, my prayer is that truly you are manifesting these things in your life. Now, watch this thing. We're in chapter 12, 1 Corinthians, and verse number 11. Oh, I was talking about speaking in tongues, diverse kinds of tongues, and then interpretation of tongues. He's not saying these things. So, you know, like he says, all these things are given for us to profit with. Let me tell you something. The ability to speak diverse kinds of tongues. What does that mean? Now, I may not understand a particular language. But do you know, I get in the midst of such people, for example. And then I can ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, can you give me utterance in this language? Yeah. And then he will give you. Say, huh? Really? Oh, yeah. He will give you. Why don't you just ask him? Why don't you ask him? I've been in certain places and then they were speaking their language. And I tell them this is what you're saying. Now that's interpretation of tongues, yeah. Not, not translating of tongues. You need to understand. He didn't say translating of tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Now, what does it mean, interpretation of tongues? Someone can speak for 30 minutes and they also will just say, This is what the person is saying. So you just get the whole gist of what the person is saying. That's interpretation, not translation. That's where you're trying to do. Um, somebody says, Makoto, and I say, Okay, he said this, 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 this. this. Now that's, that's translator, translation. But interpretation means all what he's saying, this is what he means. So you don't, you don't get stuck in a situation where people are speaking their language and you don't know what they are saying. Say, ah, you want to sell me. They can't sell you. With the Holy Ghost in you, they can't sell you. All you need to do is, Holy Spirit, what are they saying? Can you, listen, just try this thing out and come back with a testimony, I'm telling you. Now, the same way, I want to communicate in this language. So what do I do? Lord, can I? And depending on your faith, he can give you a tongue in that language. And you will begin to speak that person's language. You know, we limit these things to only when we are ministering, you know, when we are preaching. Now, I've had testimonies where uh, preachers, uh, it, it doesn't happen to, with me yet. Uh, I've, not, I've not asked like that. Now, I've, I've had testimony, real testimonies now of, of preachers who... They were in a particular vicinity and they heard people speaking their language. And then the Holy Spirit said, go, go speak to these people. And say, ah, but, but will they understand English? He said, go speak to them. And then they went and while they, you know, they were going, a tongue came. And then as they opened their mouth to speak, they found themselves interacting with the people in their language. And then they spoke and spoke and then they got born again eventually. Because, like, whoa, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. Listen, you remember what Paul said, that God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that you having all sufficiency in all things may have in abundance everything you need. Amplify says so that you will have no aid or you will need no support. Now, this is part of it. The Holy Ghost in you, He can be anything to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now let's go on. It says, But all these, verse 11, worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as He wills. Did you see that? Now, He, you know, I told you, ask Him. I'm not saying now go lock up yourself and say, oh God, I want to manifest the gift of interpretation of tongues. I want to manifest the gift of interpretation of tongues. Now, it happens to me a lot. I mean, 
you know, I'm with someone, the person is praying, and then I get the prayer point. The person is speaking in tongues. Oh, Rababa, Shaka, I get the prayer point. I get everything the person is saying. I'll just know. And, and sometimes I use it to help the people. Because I ask, you know, when it comes, you know, that's one thing. When it comes like that, don't be too smart to, or don't be too fast to say, hey, I've got power. No, Holy Spirit, what, what do you want me to do? What would you have me do? And sometimes he will tell you, minister to the person like this, or tell the person this. And then you go tell the person. You don't have to say, I was hearing everything you are saying. You know, sometimes you, you, do, you we're not here to show that we are somebody. We're here to be a blessing to people. Praise God. So keep your heart and your eyes at being a blessing to people. So verse 12 says, For as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Are you seeing that? Now what is Christ? Christ is simply the Holy Spirit. It is because the Holy Spirit rested on Jesus and Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. That's why he is called Jesus Christ. So we too, when we, full, we are full of the Holy Ghost as we are, if you've received Christ, you are full of the Holy Ghost. He is in you. And now when you begin to operate by the Holy Ghost, you too are Christ. It's not just a name. It's the function of what we are or what we do. Jesus. So says, Many bodies, all one. Many members. Now it says, for by, the, for by one spirit, we are we all baptized into one body. So he used the word baptism here, and he wasn't talking about water baptism. We were all baptized by the Holy Ghost. We were all baptized, we were immersed in the Holy Ghost, into the body of Christ. You cannot be a member of the body of Christ if you are not in the Holy Ghost. What does it mean to be in the Holy Ghost? To be baptized. Now when you see Jesus say, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now that's what he was referring to. He wasn't referring to water baptism. I've told you this before. In the New Testament church, they don't talk about water baptism. Jesus, water baptism ended with John the Baptist. Now, this is the truth. No matter how hard it is for you to accept it, it is the truth. One day, you will realize. If you don't realize it now, when Jesus comes, you will realize it. Praise God. That he never, he never talked about water baptism. See? But he was talking about the Holy Ghost baptism. So now he says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be jews or gentiles whether we will be born or free or have been and have been all made to drink into one spirit so now this is how it works i love i love to illustrate it this way you get a bottle of water an empty bottle an empty bottle right and then you get a bucket fill the bucket with water now when you dip the bottle into the bucket of water what has happened? You have baptized that bottle in that water. Now, while that, while that bottle is in the water, when you open the, the lid, what happens? The water gets into the bottle. So now, the bottle is in the water and the water is in the bottle. Did you get that? Now, that's what he was trying to explain here. We were all baptized into Christ and then we were all made to drink. We have all been and have been made to drink into one spirit. So we, we are baptized in the Holy Ghost and then we have received the Holy Ghost in us. So we are in him and he is in us. Ayabasha. So now you see scriptures, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Then also he says, if Christ be in you, it is not a play of words. That's just what it is. We are in him and he is in us. Praise God. So it doesn't matter where you are. Born free, Jews, Greek, Muslim, Hinduist, Shintoist. If you come to Christ, this is the thing that happens. You are baptized into one body. What our connection is, is that we are all in Christ. He does the connection. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand... I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, 
I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Are you getting what he's saying? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where were the smell, smelling? But now, what's he saying? Don't say, oh, because I'm not functioning in this gift. Am I really born again? So, you know people talk like that. So, when they see you, say, yeah, I'm asking myself, am I born again at all? You are. If the Spirit of God is in you. So don't try to be someone else. That's what he's saying. Don't try to be someone else. Be who you are. Now, now watch this. He says, mm. he says, but now had God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it had pleased him. All right. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet one, yet but one body. Many members, one body. And, verse 21 now, And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. You know what that means? You can't function in isolation. Nay! Much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Every part of our body is necessary. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 23. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon those we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness for our comely parts have no need but God have tempered, tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked so there is no see there is the, 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 every hair remember Jesus said every hair of your head they are coded they are numbered There is no hair that leaves your body that God is not aware of. It's that serious. So you just think about how we go to the barber shop and then they just scrape our hair and then, hey. <laughs> you know, something just came to my mind right now. How about taking permission before you cut your hair from the Lord? Think about it, Lord. Can I cut my hair? You know, I have, I, it's getting difficult for me to comb. Can I cut my hair? Oh, ladies, Lord, I want to do this style. Can I, can I do it? Say, ah, you're not going too far. No, I'm just talking about relationship. Praise God. All right. But, but I'm saying that to say every part, that's what Paul was explaining, every part of our body is very important to God. Now, when you check the anatomy of the human body, every part, you will see how complicated it looks. But every part has a function that is carrying out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, verse 25 says, That there should be no schism, that's division, in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. No division in your body. So now he's saying all this to talk about the body of Christ. And then he says, look, God... It says that there should be no schism in the body, but that the member should have the same care one for another. No schism, no division. Don't create division in the body of Christ. That's what it's saying. Don't say, oh, we are this. You know, in chapter 3, we read it. Say, some say, I'm of Paul. Some say, I'm. Don't say, we are, you know, we, we are the word movement. We, we are the spirit movement. We, we are the nonsense. That's childish, carnal. We are of one body. What do I need to know about you? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? That's what it means to be born again. Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Are you led by the Spirit of God? Hallelujah. That's why in all things, you as an individual should seek to be led. You know why? Because I've got to stop here. <laughs> Praise God. Make sure you're led by the Spirit of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Oh, by the Holy Spirit, let the gifts of the Spirit, as we know it, be made manifest in your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Testimonies are coming out of this truth, even from you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Listen, have a great week. Praise God. The Lord bless you. Bye-bye.